everyone, I'm Ali and welcome to my channel. Today I thought I would put a couple of techniques to the test that I have been seeing all over my Instagram, my YouTube, and my Pinterest, and that is faux textured pottery or like faux stoneware looking vases. So first things first, let's talk about the vases. Vases? Vases? How do you say it? Vase vases? So first things first, let's talk about the vases. Nothing sounds right. I'm gonna be saying that so many times in this video that nothing is gonna sound right. Here are all of my contenders for what technique is best. I thrifted all of my vases and I was looking for minimal shapes without any sort of fancy details or large fanning necks and also looking for short and round pieces because I find those to be very trendy right now. And my fifth vase looks a little bit more modern farmhouse and that's because I'm going to be trying modern farmhouse technique and that's gonna involve some dirt. So stay tuned for that DIY. So I gave all the vases a good wash with just some soap and water and now they are outside because it is time to spray them with primer. an hour and all of my primer on my vases have dried. Now I'm going to be starting out with the little guy, this cute one, and I'm choosing him first because I'm going to do a tried and true technique and that is the baking soda and paint trick. Typically when I see this baking soda technique, people use house paint, but I'm actually going to use acrylic paint. It works just as well as using like a latex paint. So I really don't see a difference. Now I'm just gonna add in baking soda. I don't measure anything. I just kinda add a bit in, mix it up, and if I need more, then I add more. As you'll see, it gets into this really just like fluffy texture, and that's what you're going for. Now I'm just gonna use a foam brush and begin applying the paint right onto the base. Now my goal with this is to get it as smooth as I can for the first coat, and then the second coat is where we can start adding some of the texture. Also, the more baking soda you add to your paint, the more textured it's going to be. And I think I have mine just like somewhat in the middle. And I'm gonna just let this completely dry before going in with a second coat. The first coat has dried, so now it's time to add a second coat. Now when doing any sort of technique where you're creating a texture, it looks best if you keep your brush strokes all going in the same direction. That looks so good. Okay, on to vase number two. And I forgot to say in my intro that for all of these, well, actually minus the first one since I've already done that before, I am following other people's tutorials. So this one, I wanted to put some stone textured spray paint to the test as a way to make a textured vase. Now the tutorial that I'm following, which will be linked in the description. She painted her vase matte white first and then had a beautiful creamy stone colored textured spray paint that went over top. I went to three different stores and that was sold out at all three. So it's just like, you know, I already have this little sample at home of this sand colored textured stone paint. I'll just use this. I need to use it up anyhow. So I'm gonna put some acrylic paint on as my base first, though I definitely recommend maybe spray painting a solid color base first, but I'm just working with what I have at this point, and I think it will still turn out just as well. So my paint is dry on this base. I am very satisfied with it, how it looks. That color is stunning. So time to go give it one to two coats of the stone spray paint. So 
So I just ran out of spray paint after just one coat on the base because I've used this for several projects before. But overall, I'm actually pretty satisfied with the look with just one coat. For my third base, this cute little round guy, I'm going to do a faux concrete texture on it. So the first step with that is to give it a coat of chalky finish spray paint. It might need two, we'll see. All right, the spray paint is dry. Now with this technique that I am trying is a like faux brushed concrete look. And the person's tutorial that I'm following, she used just some paint and a like bristle brush to make this effect. So I'm going to mix together some white chalk paint and some black chalk paint to make like a medium gray color. So what the instructions said to do was put a little paint on the brush and then just get as much of it off as you can on a paper plate. And then start doing up and across strokes. Also because this base had a little bit of like a plastic wrap around it with that pattern, it is sort of showing as an impression, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna like how that looks. And remember, just be very organic. Even add a couple, I really like the diagonal strokes. Now her tutorial said have paper towels. She did not mention how she used them, but I'm thinking that if I do this, it's gonna really, really bring out that texture. Oh yeah, that does exactly what I would have hoped. This is really a cool technique. Now I'm gonna use this on like everything. This next technique I would like to call absolutely trying and hoping for the best that this turns out because I am making this one up completely. Now I did a lot of research and I saw a number of techniques where people use different types of, I don't know, like hardware stores products to texture their vases. I saw um, people use mortar, people use plaster of Paris, people use drywall joint compound. So I'm gonna just see if grout will have a similar effect, if it will even kind of like adhere to the vase, because I know grout goes in between. And when I did other research, I saw to use the stuff that you used for puttying or mud for the tile instead of like the actual grout. So I have no clue if this is going to work. And if it doesn't work, at least it was fun. So first I'm gonna mix up the grout following the instructions. I'm going to just start applying it to the vase. Oh, it does work. I don't know if this is the best method to use my fingers, but we are going to do that. Maybe if you have gloves, wear gloves. I think the method for this is to just get a nice thin coat on first, but this is working way better than I thought it would. So one coat of the grout is dry and this is looking way better than I ever thought it was actually going to and it's sticking pretty well. So with that, I'm going to add a second coat and let that dry. So my grout is dry and it's a little bit crumbly, which is to be expected. So I'm just gonna use a very fine grit sandpaper and just lightly rub off some of the rough bits. 
Now I'm going to paint the whole vase in this matte acrylic paint in khaki. I'm using a foam brush so that I'm able to get in all of that texture, but I don't necessarily want to fill it all in. I kind of want to see what it will look like first with a little bit of the grout texture peeking through. Now on to the final vase, the one that I am going to be covering with dirt. Yes, I had seen this technique a handful of times on Pinterest. I happened to see it on Lone Fox's channel, Drew did it, and I just, I really wanna put this to the test. First things first, I'm going to spray this vase with my chalky finish anvil gray spray paint, and then, I'm gonna go outside and get some dirt. <laughs> Now let's go on a fun little adventure to get some dirt. So fun news, it looks like it rained, so this is gonna be more like mud than dirt, so yay. So here's a decent amount of dirt. And fun fact, I don't have a shovel, so I have a spoon in a Tupperware container. I'm staying outside for this next part. So I have one coat of the chalky finish on this base here, and it's not perfect, but I think that's okay because the next step is to spray more of the chalky finish on top and then immediately go in with the dirt. Got some dirt on my gloves and then, and what I read was it is supposed to kind of scratch the paint off. That is normal. I think I'm satisfied with that. I'm gonna let that dry. Now it's time for round two of the dirt, repeating the exact same process. What I'm doing is covering up the first layer of dirt completely and then going in with the fresh dirt. At this point, I'm pretty satisfied with how much texture that this has because there's still gonna be one more element. So I'm gonna cover this entire thing once again in the chalky finish, completely covering up all the dirt because that's basically on there just to create texture at this point. I'm doing it a very light coat so you will still see a little bit of the dirt shine through. Here we are onto the fun kind of final aspect of this. I mixed up some water into my leftover dirt and now I have a nice muddy gross yeah this is really disgusting <laughs> um, but now it's time to put it on the base. Now before calling it a day today with all these vases, I'm going to go and give them all a coat of matte clear spray paint. This will just seal in all of that hard work and make sure that these are a little bit more durable. I am back to wrap up this video. It's been a few days. Everything has been dry for quite a while. And I just wanna say these all 
exceed my expectations on how I thought they would turn out. I knew the baking soda one would do well because I've done this technique already, but these other four plus the baking soda ones are just all stunning. I mean, they all have their own unique personalities, their own textures, and I just love it. So I highly recommend that you try out at least one of these techniques. And if you're only going to try one, I think you need to try the mud base technique because it is just so unique. It is different and I don't know. I'm personally in love with this one. It just has so much character. Now in the comments below, I want to hear which style of vase you liked the best. Which one would you put in your home or you would like to try? And before I go, I just want to put in a really quick word to all of my brand new subscribers. I want to say welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. And it's just really exciting to see my channel growing. And I just, I appreciate every single one of you. And of course, if you want to join in and you're not already one of my friends here on this channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any time I post. I have lots of Christmas DIYs coming up starting in November. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!